Hey guys, Sheldon back with another review, and today we're looking at the Star Wars movie realization Ashigaru Stormtrooper from Bandai. Alright, let's take a look at the box really quickly. It's got this box art here on the side, got his face. On the other side, it's just his name. Uh, and then on the back, you have some posing options for him uh, and his accessories. All right, and that pretty much does it. So let's look at the parts he comes with. Let me bring this a little closer. So first things first, he comes with this pistol right here. Let me actually get closer so you can see a little better. There you go, he comes with his blaster. It's really cool, it's done in that old style, so it's like a wooden metal. And actually this little flintlock, I don't know if that's what it's called, uh, actually moves. It's kind of small, so be careful. So it's like, phew. so really, really cool. Uh, and he also comes with this sword all right here and scabbard, which you can just remove. Uh, all right, I'm gonna put that back in. He also comes with some relaxed gripping hands, and I believe this one is to hold the scabbard actually. So that's pretty cool. He comes with trigger fingers for the blaster, of course. Uh, and he comes with these other gripping hands, and this one is for the katana. What I really like about the trigger finger, too, is that it holds the blaster pretty well. The finger actually goes through the trigger guard and, like, onto the trigger itself, which is a nice touch. We didn't expect as much from a figure like this anyway, though. Alright, so speaking of the figure, let's take a look at it. Right, so let's get a very quick height measurement while I move my stuff out of the way and find my ruler wherever it went. Here it is. All right, so this is the movie realization line, which is the seven inch scale. So he is about uh, just a little under seven inches. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, now it's all blurry. All right, just a little under seven inches right here. All right. So let's go through articulation. So, uh, actually let's take paint and sculpt. Uh, so overall, first impressions, the paint is pretty good. I actually like it better than the Darth Vader. Um, I don't know if it's a preference in color, but the paintwork around the skirt is just looks cleaner. It's just less blotchy and things like that. So overall, it's a pretty nice look. The shading throughout sculpt is really nice. There's a little detail right here. This is actually soft plastic, so it can move. So overall, it's, it's a pretty nice look for Stormtrooper. All right, and it's even asymmetrical here. Uh, okay, so articulation, the head, I believe it's on a ball peg in the head and a ball bang in the neck, but it's, I mean, range of motion like this is okay, um, but there's really not much up and down. This is about, focus, about as far far back as you're going to go, and this is as far forward as you're going to go, so it's not that great. But again, it's a stormtrooper, so it's wearing armor, so I can kind of get that it's not supposed to be super articulated. For the shoulder, uh, these shoulder pads are actually on a tiny ball peg. Let me pull it off so I can show you a little bit better. There you go. So it's on a tiny ball peg, so it moves down pretty well, and it's a soft plastic as well, so you know it won't impede your articulation. So you get that full 360 in the shoulder, and I believe it is a ball socket that goes in, so you actually have like some shoulder shrugging right here. Uh, and then you have this little ball peg that's on a hinge, so you can move the shoulder. It has a bicep swivel, but I it's done kind of strangely. So the swivel, oh, let me see if I can make this a little brighter. Uh, okay, so the swivel, it's like inside and then this thing is like covering the swivel and so you actually have to move both at the same time so it's kind of weird it works but i feel like it could be done better and also the way that it's sculpted you have the tricep actually coming up uh, a little bit and so that does get in the way oh it's uh, out of focus okay it does get in the way uh when you want to pivot it like all the way around you can see that this peg right here is blocking it. And so it's okay, but I feel like it could be done a lot better. Uh, okay, so bicep civil is there. You're going to have to finagle it. Uh, for the elbow, we do get 
a little better than 90 degrees. Uh, man, it's all out of focus. What the heck? One second. Let me see if I can fix this. Uh, okay. For the elbow, right, so a little better than 90 degrees. Uh, the forearm right here does swivel. Uh, for the wrist, it is on a hinged ball peg. I'll just pop it off so you can take a look at that. Yeah, so very small. Ooh, oh, it's so dark. One sec. Okay, so it's on that hinged ball peg right here. I'm going to leave it off because it's too troublesome. Uh, and then on the waist, it is actually a single ball peg right here. So not that much range of motion. Okay, uh, and then right here we have this little swiveling thing. I don't know what to call it, but what that's for is for the katana. So you just slide that right in. Fits pretty nicely and it swivels so you can pretty much make sure it doesn't get in the way. And then the skirt is a floating piece right here, all soft plastic. Uh, so for the waist, it's just the same. It's just that ab crunch and waist all in one right here. Let me take this out by the way so it doesn't get in the way while I'm trying to move it around. Uh, okay, uh, for the legs we have ball pegs and it's kind of that wide jointed ball peg up into the waist and then out to the legs. Uh, and there's a thigh swivel, I don't know if you can see it in there because it's so dark. Uh, and for the most part it's actually okay. So this is about as far out as it goes for the splits. If you do any wider the joints do pop off. It won't break but you know it's a ball joint so it'll be okay. Uh, and then going forward, the armor does get in the way, simply because the thigh is kind of thick. It's about as far as you can go. You can get a little bit further, um, but, you know, that's about it. And then far back, again, armor gets in the way again, but it's soft. So if you want to finagle it, you can get a little further, but this is about as far back as it's going to go. Uh, and then for the knee, double jointed, pretty good range of motion, greater than 90 degrees. And then for the ankle, uh, it looks like it's on a ball hinge right here. So down, up, and then you do have an ankle rocker. If we just turn it around like that. So not bad. The sculpt again does get in the way though uh, because of this little rise right here in the armor. All right, so I think overall, not bad. Uh, again, seven inch. It's also not super cheap. I think it's about 60 right here. So let's see my final thoughts. In terms of sculpt, it's pretty nice. Oh, it looks like it's all broken right here. Uh, <laughs> in terms of Peyton's sculpt, it's, it's really great. Uh, articulation is not bad, actually. I'd say it's like better than some of the uh, like Black Series figures, very interesting enough, at least in the elbows. Um, it is a little bulky, so articulation can be hard because armor gets in the way. But again, it is all soft plastic, so you can actually get pretty good range of motion. So I would say if you're a fan of Star Wars and you're looking for a unique figure, you know, go ahead and pick it up. This is a pretty unique piece and design. Uh, plus it's the kind that looks good multiples if you're into building a squad. Um, I guess if you're a casual fan, um, looking to get into it, maybe it's not for you, because again, it's not the cheapest figure, uh, but it does look great, and it's sort of a kind of new take on Star Wars. Okay, well anyway, I'll get this guy in some poses at the end here, but thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to give me a like, and subscribe for more videos. Alright, later guys.